Well, the, the largest cost that yeah. we have is there's always two, right? Like, one is rental. Of course, definitely. Right? And then the other one is uh, HR cost. Well, right? People, I thought yeah, retail people. have uh, much lesser people compared to uh, F&B. So actually retail and HR cost is still uh, a huge uh, you know, bucket for you guys? Still huge. I okay. think it's still huge. Welcome to the Brick Motor Cloud Podcast, where we share scaling stories of F&B and retail companies. I'm Jensen, one of the co-founders of Staff Any, and this podcast is brought to you by Staff Any as well as produced by Nick Chan. Today, we are honoured to have Lim Chun Seng yep. from the Money Max Group to join us on today's episode. Hi, Chun Seng. Hi, hi. Thanks for having me here today. Awesome. Uh, bro, could you share a little bit about yourself uh, to the audience? Okay, sure. Yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Chun Seng. I'm the Group General Manager for Money Max uh, Financial Services. Uh, well, a little bit about myself. I, I used to study in the UK, uh, and I, I used to read law in the UK. Actually, uh, finished my my uh, legal training, and uh, and then I went back to I went back to uh to help my family business uh before before I got caught to the bar. So that was about five years ago. Uh, so five five years in now, uh, managed to 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 bring some business units up along the way. Uh, and so, so that, that that's where we're at uh, through COVID and stuff like that. So it's been quite a ride for us. Super, super. Uh, could you share a little bit about the vision of uh, Money Max Group? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, our, our our vision is actually very simple. Uh, our, our main objective uh, is to provide access to credit, right, uh, to people in Southeast Asia. And then, uh, and if if maybe I could just explain it in terms of uh, the business verticals that we have. Uh, I think the one, the traditional brick and mortar business that everyone's very familiar with the brand would be our pawn shops, yep. right? Uh, pawn shops, you know, for those who, who may not really understand what the business is about, is essentially uh, collateralized lending, right? Right, the older form of collateralized lending, right, where where they bring like you know gold chains, gold jewelry, right, diamonds, whatever they have at home, right, and they come and then we you know we exchange for a certain certain loan to the, the value of the item. Uh, together with that, we have a second vertical. And, and, and that's where our retail business came in, right? Uh, so those, those two, those two are, I think it makes it, it forms the money max outlet that everyone is familiar with, you know, right? That, that's familiar to the man on the street. Right, right. Uh, of course, in our podcast, we are particularly interested in the brick and mortar side of things. Exactly, exactly. So maybe uh, just to highlight, uh, in terms of money max, the pawn shop business and the yes, retail business, yes, yes. how many outlets do you have in uh, you know Singapore and Malaysia as well as the rest of the world? Uh, yeah, we we. Have our presence mainly in uh, Singapore and Malaysia. Um, I think we're close to a hundred outlets uh, wow. across 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 two two countries now. Uh, slightly different for both of them, right? If I, if I go back to my previous point just now, the the the, the question that they always had for us is what what really made us stand out, right? right. We, we 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 came into the pawnbroking industry in two zero zero eight, right? The pawnbroking industry is uh, uh it's been around for a long time, yep. right? So so and, and so the, the first question that people always ask us is what 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 really made you guys so unique that you could you know go in and market and and, right. and, and, and you know grow so fast right. at a period right and and the answer really is on the retail side of things okay. um when we came in i don't know if you guys have seen the uh, old old uh, pawn shop before, right <laughs> like you're you know the editor Sometimes you can put you can put some dodgy, photos yeah. here to show right the old one yeah. you know they always have these steel bars right then a bit right? dodgy yeah, a bit, uh, i'll go say dodgy or a bit okay. forbidding okay. right okay. it's a bit forbidding right got it, got it, got and, it. and 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 the 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 place, the, the, the shop is always designed in a manner, right? That, right. that puts, I would say that puts the, the pawnbroker in an uh, unequal footing as mm. compared to the customer, That's right? right. It's always at a higher position. The customer's right. always at a lower position, right? I mean, it's not whether it's right or wrong. That's just the nature of the industry right. back then. Uh, when we came in, we were very clear that uh, we wanted to do something about this, right? We, we thought that, you know, because of that, there was a certain stigma attached to going to the uh, to pawn shops. Right. Right, so the whole idea about bringing a retail, infusing a retail element to the pawn shops, uh, was that one we could change the aesthetics of the place, right? So you take a look at our pawn shops; yeah, it's, it doesn't look like that. It looks like a normal. It looks retail like store, a retail right? shop. It looks yeah. like a place I I want to buy like uh, gold. There's a recent product I saw online that you guys have like a zero point two gram gold yes, 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 and all. Yes, it's yes, very trendy. It's yes, very young. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I think jewelry as well. Correct. I look at the way you guys put the gold price of the day and everything. Yes, yes, yes. And then the way you guys decorate, it looks like a retail shop. Basically, I I feel like I'm going there to look at like secondhand products. Or Correct. Yeah, Correct. Exactly. Pre-love, exactly. Uh, pre -love, but of course, uh, authentic, exactly. high quality, exactly. high value. Uh, it's really a good uh, retail shopping experience. Exactly. 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 So aesthetics is, is is one portion. You know, we tried and and that alone it, it allowed us to stand out from you know our traditional competitors, right? So that's one. And and of course, then it's also this idea that you rightly mentioned, right? 
Nobody really knows whoever who for even when a customer comes to a shop, nobody really knows whether the person is there uh, to buy a product, right? Mm-hmm. It can be brand new jewelry, right. it can be secondhand jewelry, or they're there to pawn their stuff, right? Right, and and we we hope that you know by mere virtue of having this choice, right, we kind of bring both sides, huh? kind of demystify and destigmatize the entire experience of going to the shop, right? So so there was a concept when we first did it, uh, and I think that served us well. Uh, the second reason as to why we were able to penetrate quickly, right, uh, is is because by infusing this retail element into into the pawn shop, um, we were able to bring down the average PSF. We were able to justify higher P- yeah. uh, higher rental use, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Because then we have high naturally yeah. we have greater. Turnover. And it makes sense, right? Because I think a lot of your locations are quite prime. Exactly. Uh, train stations. Exactly. Uh, exactly. First floor of the malls. Like exactly. You know, high footfall places, or yeah. next or whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with the dual concept, both the pawnbroking business and the retail business, you're able to you know, justify a better uh, exactly. PSF rental exactly. uh, business and exactly. get a better deal. Exactly, exactly. Because we have higher turnover, right? right. So we could justify paying uh, for prime locations, yep. right? And, and and the nature of this business is such a lo- it's location. Location is the most important thing, right? Right. right. So it's about having higher footfall, right? It's about it's about uh, uh, exposing your brand. Right, right uh, getting more eyeballs into it. Uh, so yeah, that, that was really that was really how how we started, uh, back back then. And then uh, and then uh, in, in I would say maybe two three years back, uh, right. we started really looking, uh, into going to the Malaysian market. Uh, we've been I, in Malaysia for a while already, about yeah, ten years. I, I saw online that you guys had a drive through yes, uh, yes, yes. shop, right? Yes, we did, we did, we did. Uh, tell and, us and, more. That's a really a good idea, right? Yeah, like, uh, McDonald's drive through <laughs> very popular over there. Starbucks <laughs> drive through and everything. And yeah. now we have also pawnbroking as well as. Uh, do you do a retail side or mini pawnbroking? Uh, in, in in Malaysia, it's just on the pawnbroking side. I of see. things. Uh, again, there you know it goes back to the same consideration. Mm. Rental there is a lot cheaper, right? Right. So there's not really a need for us to 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 mix the the, the, right, businesses, the businesses together. Uh, but but back to your point, actually it's quite interesting, right? Uh, we've been in Malaysia since uh, one four actually, right? So we took so this entire this entire new expansionary push that we had, it took it was a combination of say I would say about eight to nine years worth of uh, of of uh, experimentation and learning the demographics and the know how, right? Uh, and on hindsight, it's really easy to explain, right. and I try to explain <laughs> it now very quickly, right? Uh, and it looks really simple. There are really just three things that we have learned from. Um, uh, our our decades so close to a decade worth of uh, time there. One right um, in Malaysia, uh, geographical distance is a real issue. True. It really is an issue, right? Because it is a uh, it's it's Singapore, one end or two, the other end of Singapore is say 30, 40 km. <laughs> right? Thirty forty km doesn't even get you past half of Johor. <laughs> you get what I'm trying to say. Right. Now because of that, right? One, uh, I think the reach of uh, public transport is 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 not not as not as far yep. right as as Singapore. So because of that, everybody. In Malaysia, either drives or rides a motorcycle, right? I think that that, that one, I think that's everybody, fair, yeah. it's fair, right? And so what we really realized, right, is that um, the business at our shop is not um, restricted by the demand in Malaysia because the market size in Malaysia is big. What we 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 run our pawn shops not in the shopping malls where there's unlimited parking slots, right? We run our our pawn shops in in those in localized areas right. where they call tamans, right? Mm. Where you know there may be like 20, 30 parking lots, right? So strangely enough, our business gets affected, right? When the parking lots are full, <laughs> right? It's limit, It's a real limiting factor to us, right? It's a real limiting factor to us. And, and of course, then there are other things also, right? Because it's the parking lots are exposed to the elements. So when it's raining, we know definitely business will drop. Right, right. Right, right. And, and, and yeah, so those, those, that, that is the real primary concern, right? It's about understanding the demographic and, and what's really going on uh, right, right, right in the country right. itself. And of course, the other thing that we 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 also know is that our customers always want privacy, mm. right? They mm. always want privacy because mm. when they come to us, obviously they have some some needs that they have to attend to. That's right, That's right, right, right. So privacy is always uh, at the top of their concerns. Yeah. And, and in Singapore, you mask it with the dual concept. Exactly. And in Malaysia, Malaysia we, we vehicle. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sense, right? right? Yeah, some exactly, privacy down exactly, there. Exactly. Really smart. Exactly. Exactly. And and the last, uh, maybe only in Singapore. Singapore is probably the only place, right, where you can take cash and go around and you're not scared. <laughs> and you're not scared, right? I would imagine em- almost everywhere Anywhere else in the world, the world you, exactly. you'll be worried, right? And we, right. We, we can tell, right? Like when customers come in, sometimes they bring plastic bags, sometimes they bring <laughs> and like, they stack of cash down yeah, there. Yeah, they wrap their newspaper and stuff. Like, people know also, right? right? So security is also something that we were thinking about. Uh, so we... At the back of our head, we wanted to do this new expansion push in the Malaysia. We knew that there were these considerations that we had. Right. We wanted something that was convenient 
for right. our customers, right? They didn't have to park their car. Right. Right? Rain or shine, if you come in, right. we wanted something that uh, you know was relatively private. Right. Of course, secure, so, right? And uh, I remember we went into Malaysia uh, slightly after MCO. And then it was not actually McDonald's. We went into Malaysia back then and, and, and that was when, you know, you started having restrictions with yeah. COVID, right? And um, Watson's actually had a drive through concept also. Wow. And then we saw that, right? And we're like, wow. Why not? Yeah, why not, right? Why <laughs> not? from the best. Yeah, yeah why, why not, exactly. right? Why not? And then we saw, and then obviously McDonald's is also something that we saw. Always so, have been there, yeah. So we thought, okay, that, that's quite interesting, right? We should try, we should try. And, uh, and yeah, so we tried, we tried and, and it worked. Yeah, I think that's a really good advice to all aspiring uh, retail and uh, food and beverage owners. We need to uh, localize to the market, yes. understand the needs of the market, yes. and not just market. I think Chun Seng shared a very valuable advice on the um, you know mindset of the consumers, right? When they dine in your place or when they consume your product, yeah. what is the psychology they have, and how can we uh, you know enhance either the experience by either you know showcasing certain things or protecting some of the privacy or whatnot, yeah. right? In this case, yeah. So a lot of learnings and and, and experience on that. Yeah. Um, I count that as a big win because you guys managed to expand uh, to the larger market, Malaysia, um, despite being there for maybe uh, eight years, you mentioned 2014. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and, and that, I think, contributed actively in terms of both revenue as well as scale. Uh, what's one of the toughest moments then in your expansion? You know, what were moments that didn't turn out as well and you had some learnings that you could share with some of our listeners today? Well, I, I think in general, that what, whatever we did in over the past one and a half, month, uh, one and a half years uh, turned, turned out quite, quite mm. all right. Uh, but if I think if there were some learnings that we wanted to distill, uh, it's it's this. Uh, I think many times it's about taking calculated risks, mm. right? Uh, and 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 that is a function of two things: one, understanding uh, your own capabilities, right. right? As 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 a company, as a business owner, right? And two, understanding the opportunities that you had ahead. Uh, and give you an example, right? Uh, you 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 would you would rightly ask uh, uh, and raise the valid point. Right? We've been in this place for eight to nine years, right? right? Uh, what took us so long to push forward, right? Surely we would have understood these things five years. <laughs> not <right>? necessarily. <laughs> Sometimes the right thing in the war is not yeah. that obvious after all, yeah. right? We have to figure it out and then uh, make mistakes, right? I bet out of the successful drive through expansion you did, there's like five other projects you did that maybe turn yeah, not yeah, as well, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. But exactly. I think the, the the message you're trying to share is to take more calculated risks. Yes, uh, yes. And you, is there a moment that you guys did a field experiment that maybe you could share with people so that they don't repeat the same footsteps uh, and understand the learnings? Oh, uh, on yeah, yeah, so back to the point on, on, on taking calculated risks, right? And and, and, and to the, I, the the reason why we were unable to push ahead before COVID, right. the real reason is because see, in Johor, right, uh, the business is generally good in Johor uh, because of Singaporeans going in, right? And, and of course, the local population is strong. Right. Uh, so it's not so much that we didn't want to do business, it's that we couldn't find locations, mm. right? Because no business, businesses <laughs> were doing well, they're not going to give up their local yes, business. Yes. Right? So it became an issue that, you know, even if I had money, I couldn't do it. So we right. were stuck, we were stuck. We knew that there were opportunities out there for us, but right. it was not something that we could capitalize on. Mm. And so COVID hit and COVID in many ways were, was a, a blessing in disguise for us, right? Because it kind of shuffled the cards for mm. us, right? And then we realized, oh, sharks, many places that we were looking for that with potential, right? Uh, was suddenly available, right? And, and back then, uh, back then, right, we had to make this decision, right? Do we go one shot at a time? Set up one shot at a time, right? Or do we just bite the bullet and go? Right? And the calculations for us were, were, were simple, right? Say one, one, or the rental for one shop is a 3,000 3, ringgit, for instance, right? Just example, example, right? hypothetically. Yeah, right. And then uh, say you were looking at 10 potential shops that you know for sure there's a reasonably good chance that yeah, you would do a uh, good, good food for, yeah, yeah, exactly, dynamics, right? Yeah. And then the question is whether you can swallow $30,000 a month, right? Right, in rental, right? And and that, that is not something that it's all contextual, right? Mm. Whether you can take it, whether I can take it, it's def all definitely different, different for our business, right? Yeah. right? Uh, for, for, for us back then, we knew that, hey, look, we really had businesses that would definitely be able to sustain this kind of output, right? It was, to us, the risk was, it was really small versus the potential upside. Right. And and that is one of the real reasons why we're able to expand so fast, mm. right? It's about location, location, location in our business. And, and, and when we knew that the locations were out, we decided to bite the bullet and go. I see. So yeah. you strike when the iron is hot and uh, opportunistically when COVID washed the uh, you know, cuts, uh, yeah. you, know, you had a chance and you yeah, guys yeah. took the opportunity. Yeah, correct. And then we grabbed the opportunity. But of course, the, the it, it I would say it was also very stressful, right? Of course. Because then, uh, it's so, uh, if whatever one, when there was one thing that maybe we would have done uh, differently, we would have been to, you know, uh, 
take it a bit more bite size. Mm. <laughs> take okay. it a bit more bite size. Eh? Uh, because yeah, then if not the next six months, eight months will be really hectic for you. You really had to push through. Right, right. Yeah. I can move on to the next section of the sure. the, the chat. Uh. Um, this part is where a lot of our audience like to hear more about insights and uh, uh, a little bit more details about operating a business. So um, before going to some of these details, uh, maybe you can share a little bit. Um, as a group, are you guys a very metrical group? Are you guys like chasing a lot of KPIs? Do you all do a lot of this kind of like uh, measurements of performance at outlet level, BU level and stuff like that? How do you guys look at, you know, metrics and performance? Uh, yes, yes, we do. We, 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 are, we are in many sense uh, a, a more traditionally run business. Right. Uh, uh, and, and we don't really have many matrices that, that we really work on. Mm -hmm. uh, now, now, now that we have we, that the, the second generation and we have a bit more uh, like professionals on board, right? We, we start getting a little uh, different matrices that we use, real, like turnover ratios, stuff like that. Mm. Uh, but really, really, it all boils down for us and I think it runs through the entire company, right? It's, it's really about profitability, right? right? Uh, revenue, yes, is something that we look at, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, there's always this acknowledgement and understanding that profitability is what puts uh, the dough on the table. Right, right. Uh, so we, we judge our businesses based on that and we manage our businesses based on that also. Awesome, awesome. So in terms of like the profitability ratio where we Correct. always look at two sides on uh, revenue and cost. Correct. What, is the, what are the largest uh, cost buckets for a retail business like yours? Um, oh. And maybe uh, if you can share a little bit some of the aspirational goals in terms of like, you know, rental ratios, uh, labor cost ratio, right, right, right. COGS ratios as a business, where do you strive towards? Well, the, the largest cost that yeah. we have is there's always two, right? One is rental. Of course, definitely. Right? And then the other one is uh, HR cost. Oh, right? People, I thought yeah, retail people. have uh, much lesser people compared to uh, F&B. So actually retail and HR cost is still uh, a huge, uh, you know, bucket for you guys? Still huge. I okay. think it's still huge. We, we, we have about 40 plus stores in Singapore, right? right? right. And, and, and see, if you do it, we do, we operate seven days a week. Right. You know, there are rosters, say two rosters, right? right. And, and that is really quite quite heavy on us. Right. Uh, but yes, you're right in the sense, I, I would assume the F&B sector has a much, higher. A much, much higher right. HR cost. Right. But it, rental for us and HR cost is, is probably the two most... Uh, sizable buckets, yeah. Sizable buckets, right? And this, those are things that we are uh, quite sensitive about as well. Got it. Uh, in terms of like your business, I know you mentioned you go for high PSF locations. Correct. Um, What kind of rental ratios are you aiming per store uh, as related? as in relation to our revenue. Like uh, in the F&B, I was talking to the other speaker uh, last time, they were saying that some of the kiosk location, they were striving for rental to be, you know, not more than 30%, for example. Uh, do you guys have such goals when you all pick up a location? Uh, no, not really, not really. Um, the main consideration for us when we, when we pick a location, right, uh, it's, it's, it's always uh, whether on a balance of probability and, and, and save in, in a space of two years, right, right. whether we'll be able to turn it profitable. Okay, right. So there's a timeline uh, to profitability, yeah, something like a two year kind of thing. Exactly, exactly. Okay. We don't really try to put it in a, in 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 like a say twenty percent, thirty percent. Got it. Although, although that makes sense, I think that makes sense. <laughs> Maybe yeah, you like, sense look too. at your outlets yeah, and see yeah, how yeah, that, yeah. that really makes sense. But how about headcount costs? Like, uh, is there also then a target, you know, labor cost per outlet or you know ratio that you guys are striving towards for a retail business? Also, no. Also, mm. no. Uh, of course, we understand that uh, HR cost is generally rising, right? Right. We've, we've, uh, the new progressive wage model and stuff right. like that. Uh, the the way that we try to increase this sustainably uh, right. in tandem with our business is to introduce higher variable components. Right. Right. For for our floor. So floor like stuff. incentives, like exactly. uh, sales targets, revenue exactly. targets, performance exactly. targets. And exactly. All. Exactly. That's cool. That's cool. Sales How are you guys targets. managing this? Uh, you know, like uh, incentives and variable component. Um, do you guys? Uh, have like a you know HR dedicated to running it, operating it, and uh, tools and products. So, so this is we we have always had commission schemes, right? right. Uh, but we we really faced uh, quite a sustained period of growth right. over the past three to four years. Uh, back then, we used to do things manually, right? Uh, of course. I I don't know how they tracked it, but I knew it was a manual process. Right. Uh, that that was okay when 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 we were at certain scale in the past, right? As we continue to grow, and that's when we started realizing, oh, you know, there's really a need to have systems in place, I right? see. digital systems, not only to track, you know, because then having a system is 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 good also in the sense that uh, it ensures the integrity of of the data, right? right? It's not easily manipulated by other people and stuff like that, also. right? Yeah. Right. 
So talking about, uh, we have we've, uh, creep into the third part, which is about digitalization yeah. and trends. Yeah. Uh, one thing I realized in the business is that you guys also have a pretty strong uh, e-commerce push. Yes. Uh, like, uh, for example, I think you're also actively hiring uh, professionals to join our e-commerce team. Yes, please. Despite some other um, e-commerce players, uh, you know, having layoffs correct, and all. Correct, uh. correct. So maybe you can share a little bit about trends in terms of such digitalization efforts. Uh, as well as you know, any new uh, investments that you guys will be taking as a group to scale certain initiatives upwards in that sense. Mm. Um, we'll, th- we'll talk about initiatives first. Uh, we like, and I mentioned as I mentioned earlier just now, we we mm. are very profit uh, very different, centric, yeah. yep. right? Uh, and and so we the how do I put it? Business units that we have under us, right? We always use uh, off the shelf systems first, right? For instance, right? right, and these systems may not necessarily be uh, tailor fit to what we are doing, right, right. But they get the generic work done. Yes, say sixty percent, seventy percent, eighty percent. You're the one to get it done. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. It's about yeah. it's about p- pulling Cross you through the uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And and so the the car business is the car financing unit is is, is right. one such example, right? Once mm-hmm. we're done with that, right, now it has reached a scale where it's profitable, right. it can sustain by itself. And then that is when we come in to start investing in the infrastructure, right? right to build right. the, to, to you know, increase efficiency right. of it. Yeah. Right. And, and and so that's what we're doing uh, for the various business units also. Uh and, and, and so so that's on that. Uh, e-commerce, thank you for bringing it up, uh, mm-hmm. is is something that uh, we we were really looking towards uh in the past, I would say one year plus. Right. Uh mixture of 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 reasons. One, the climate or rather the consumer behavior, right, right has I think changed a lot. Right. In the past two years, right. uh, I think there's a growing acceptance towards the marketplace and, and of course, uh, 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 towards e-commerce. Uh, right. my, my parents, for instance, also started buying things. That's uh, awesome. Right. I mean, when our parents start buying <laughs> that thing, it's already hitting the uh, mass market already. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly, the chairs exactly, exactly. Awesome, awesome. So, um, talking about digitalization and all, I know you guys have invested only uh, after, you know, achieving certain profitability of yeah, the business yeah, yeah. units and it needs to be, of course, uh, uh, a very um, a conscientious decision, yes. right? Um, what are some areas that you look at continually investing in terms of the digitalization of a business? Is there any trends, any products, any areas that you want to like look a little bit into in terms of potential areas of improvement in 2024? Right. We, we are primarily a lending business. And right. I know it's a sexy thing to say, right? right. AI for instance, is a sexy <laughs> thing to say, right? Uh, uh, we are not necessarily looking into that for, uh, mm. per se, but I, I would very much like to, to you know, uh, to further improve our systems, right? When it comes to um, credit scoring okay. our customers, okay. right? Uh, the, the And the whole idea here is that we understand that some of our customers may not be as, uh, as I would say, credit worthy, right? right? So uh, the naturally traditional indicators may not work as well, right? right? So it, it is this entire idea that there must be something else in the big data, right? right. That can help us uh, come up with an alternative scorecard right. for these people. That's right. the reason why they're here, right? Right, right. right. And, and, and uh, I don't have the answer to that, uh, but if you ask me well, for my wish, <laughs> it would definitely wishes. be something that that that, that I would want. Uh, administratively, uh, I think we have many more things in the company that can be automated. I see. Right. Um, HR site payroll, right. right? Attendance taking, these kind of things. These are all things that we have started to automate in the right. past uh, one over six, six right. months to a year. Uh, our logistics, for instance, supply chain, right, warehousing, these are all things that we are looking at as well. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And I hope that, uh, you know, with this uh, concession approach, it has good ROI uh, for this year. I certainly hope so. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to move on to actually the final section, sure. which is actually the rapid fire yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, session. So I'll ask a series of questions and uh, don't spend too long answering it. Uh, one word, one phrase. Okay, uh, I'll try. I'll try. All right. So uh, are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Let's go. All right, let's go. So who is someone in the industry uh, whom you follow and learn a lot from? Um, Alex Trua from Gobel. What is one piece of advice you wish uh, someone had given you when you first started out? Uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes. If you have a son or daughter that is interested to join this money lending, money uh, in financing business, what is one advice you give your kid? Uh, you got to believe in yourself. Out of all your outlets you have, uh, which is your favorite outlet to hang out at? Oh, that's tough, man. <laughs> Normally, I ask the F&B guys what is their favorite dish, so I have to iterate from the question. <laughs> uh, that, that, that's tough, man. Uh, but I think I think one of the, the favorite outlets I have would be uh, in, in, in Malaysia right now. Oh. Our store in uh, Johor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one in Johor? Uh, Specific. People uh, can go hang out on why. Is it because the catalog is higher? No, 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 no. Uh, it's it's uh, Taman Daya, actually. Uh, we have a ni- very nice drive-thru that we just opened. 
uh, we also have our, our, our office over there. It's, it's just it's a, a it's cool just a place flagship, that, like, nice yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. How should people follow you or your brand if they want to follow the journey? All right. Well, if you want to follow me, you can find me on LinkedIn, I guess. Uh, well, from time to time, I, I post uh, some 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 thoughts. I have some musings. Sometimes awesome. it's just rants. Last question over here is, are you willing to offer one mentorship like coffee session or Zoom session for one of our lucky followers? Definitely, definitely. Uh, especially awesome. if uh, it's uh, the second gen business owners. Uh, right. I, I think... Uh, the, the journey and experience I have I, I will, I'm very willing to share with them as well. that's awesome that's awesome um, uh, thanks for offering your time actually we are coming to the end of our podcast before uh, we end the podcast any parting words or any you know thing you want to share with the audience uh, well maybe just just what I mentioned just now uh, I, I think as business owners we must be uh, not afraid of making mistakes mm. Uh I think if 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 you really don't make any mistakes in your entire career or journey, then uh, you're playing it too safe, lah. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I yeah. can't, uh, you know, forget the phantom. How many mistakes I've made in my journey and stuff, any as well. Yeah, too many. Just too many. don't make too many big mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> just recover yeah, from yeah, them. Yeah, right? just and learn from to, them. Yeah, we exactly, to recover exactly. from those mistakes. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Recover from them and continue iterating. That's so cool. um, yeah, this is the end of our podcast, and we have learned a lot from Chun Seng. So uh, thank you, Chun Seng, for your time. I appreciate that. Cool. See you soon. See you soon. Like and subscribe. <laughs> awesome. See you around. See you.